All right. Yeah. Let's move on uh, to our next the email next, today. The, the next email is Ruben asks, if you had to put all of your chips in, which of these 2019 box office odds would you go with? A, two movies break two billion. B, Ooh. four movies breaking 1.5 billion. Mm -hmm. Or C, six movies breaking $1 billion. I checked box office records the past decade, and none of these choices have been met. Wow. But have gotten close on select years. We're going into a year where, if it's possible, maybe one of these could happen. I, I mean, actually, it's it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous when you think about this. That number one, yeah, of course, only four films in history have ever made two billion. So two in a year. We've been talking a lot about that recently. It, I, I mean, I only think there's two. We've talked about this, but I only believe there are two contenders for that. And that is uh, Avengers 4. You mean for 2 billion? For 2 billion. For 2 billion. Only two contenders in 2019 for 2 billion. I believe that is Avengers 4 and The Lion King. And no, I don't think Star Wars has a shot at 2 billion. Mm. It's going to make a hell of a lot of money. Let's at, at the 1.5, that's tough. Four of them hitting 1.5 cuz okay, look look at this image here. So if we got Avengers and we got and we got uh, Lion King, there are several big contenders for 1.5. I do think Star Wars Episode 9 it has has a good leg up for 1.5. I do think Toy Story 4 has a leg up for 1.5. Frozen 2. Remember the first Frozen movie, the first one made over a billion dollars. And every time I go anywhere near Disney, we see tens of thousands of little girls still dressed as Frozen. What do you I think I'm going to buy stock in Disney looking at that picture. I mean, I, I actually, as, as you mentioned, all of these, all of these, all of these are, are Disney films. So then let's look at the $1 billion potential and keep looking at this. Obviously, uh, Avengers, obviously Star Wars, obviously uh, Toy Story, obviously Lion King, obviously Frozen. I think these five are a lock for a billion. That means if we need one movie to surprise us by hitting a billion, could it be Aladdin? I'm not anticipating a billion for Aladdin, but Aladdin's a possibility. But it seems like every year there is that, like Jumanji came this close to crossing the billion dollar right. mark. Every year there seems to be one. So you know what? I feel safest saying out of those three, two making two billion, four making 1.5, or six making one, I feel safest going with the six making one billion. Because again, we've got five here that I believe are an automatic lock automatic lock for a billion and then like five or six movies that i wouldn't say necessarily would make a billion but the law of average says one of them may spider-man far from home spider-man far from home because the last spider-man movie made 860 million dollars yeah. aladdin's a possibility i mean so i think there's five or six so i'd have to say i feel most safe saying six make a billion which one would you feel safest with i think you're right and i'm thinking about like uh hobbs and shaw which is a That's fast and furious spinoff. I mean, those those have been doing quite well. The, the yep. one point five billion dollar range worldwide, and I'm sure that movie is going to be huge in China. Oh yeah, you know, and and I these franchise properties. I mean, look, I do lament the fact that we don't get movies like Hunt for Red October anymore. You know, like mid level, big budget adult dramas or action movies. We're getting these much larger tent poles that appeal to a global audience. I get that. But they're starting to get really good and exciting. Yeah. Now, if you grew up liking, basically all of these $2 billion movies are B-movies writ large for the big screen. I mean, like we've never got before. I love this stuff. Yes, I can go back and watch my dramas on Netflix or wherever you're going to see and them. they don't need to be $2 billion films. No, but it's nice to see the Coen Brothers' new film on Netflix. I'm yeah. just happy Alfonso Cuaron's new film, Roma. What studio would have financed Roma if not for Netflix? Because... It never would have made any money in the box. No, and, yeah. and the, the, the great thing about what's going on, and I think a lot of people don't understand this, is that when you make a movie for Netflix, the box office, is take the pressure of that is taken off because Netflix has already financed it. They're happy to have it there. And eventually, it might take 20 years, the viewership and whatever they're carving out per movie to justify the expense, it'll pay itself off at some point. That's the hope yes well, that's the hope as that's, long as that's a subscriber gamble base. Yeah, yeah that's their gamble at this point but look either way I, I mean we've talked about it a lot we'll continue to talk about it a lot 2019 is going to be a ridiculously good year and let's bring up that image one more time there jonathan with with those with those six films 
Um, that's a that's not, that's not it. Well, actually, and Captain Marvel, Captain is one Marvel that could potentially he was, Jonathan be a was just reminding us too. that Captain Marvel's coming but down. But when you look at this too, it is also just because I didn't even think about this as when we first brought the image up. These are all Disney films. Yeah, and you know what's funny? <laughs> the ones that we said are even have potential. Spider Man, a Disney produced film, right? A Sony distributed, Disney produced. Uh, Captain Marvel, another Disney. I mean, it's it's like it's going to be. I want to get invited to Bob Iger's house this year because it's going to be a good, good year. And I want to tell Bob Iger if I ever meet him, John Carter too, buddy. God, Make it happen. I'd love a John Carter too. I'd love it. All right, let's move on now.